What's up you amazing hackers, I hope you're all doing well today. So I want to show you this amazing website by Zseno, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong there. This is a really cool website, it's called bugbountyhunter.com and if you're a starting bug bounty hunter this is an amazing resource. Let me tell you guys why right now. So first of all there are some really cool web application challenges on here, I'll cover some of the solutions real soon. I really like these challenges because they remind me of some real life bug bounty targets that I visited recently. That's why I really want to cover these for you guys. So we'll do some of these soon. Now Bug Bounty Hunter also has uh, an optional members area. We'll go over that soon as well. Um, but this is something I really like about the website. They have some really good reading materials including how to get started in bug bounties and in here you guys can read exactly about what a bug bounty target is the different types of targets so some really basic beginner information that's really awesome um, really helpful as well especially this section i really like finding bug bounty slash vulnerability disclosure programs in here you get a couple of google dorks for say some let's say security.txt um, it's described what this exactly is uh, you get some google dorks in here there's google bug uh, there are some bug bounty platforms that you guys can join there um, is this close.io a link to that if you guys don't know what this close.io is it's pretty cool it's like a safe harbor for you guys to join and to actually um, you know you can look into this it's really cool um, i'll make a separate video on this later now um, what's also in here are some quick tips for you to find your first box this is really useful i would really recommend that you guys watch this um, and also some read this of course this is a really good one don't try too much and set goals this is one i really like scan and find as much as possible this is what's going to set you apart from other hunters because of course everybody is going to have a pretty similar methodology in the end but if you can find those endpoints that other people cannot find and we'll go into that later because there are some really cool resources for javascript analysis on the website as well if you can find those endpoints and if you can find those hidden parameters that's going to give you a giant leg up above other hunters now um, also what's been disclosed in here and of course some final remarks now that's just a bug bounty starter guide there's also some really cool cross-site scripting guides on here so um, he talks about some useful payloads some vulnerability information and it's really important that you read this guide very very thoroughly because um, like cross-site scripting a lot of you guys have asked me when you do cross-site scripting what attack parameters do you use um, can I still find cross-site scripting and guys yes of course you can still find cross-site scripting it's still massively out there the only problem is you cannot just go online and copy some list of cross-site scripting attack factors, paste it everywhere and hope that you're lucky. It doesn't work that way. You actually have to know what values you're inserting into what piece of code. Say for example you want to break some cross-site scripting attack factor into some web application. First things first, you have to fuss the parameters, you have to fuss the endpoints. And that might show you that, say, for example, a single quote might give you some errors. Now, you might be wondering, why does a single quote give me errors? So you go and investigate, and when you look into your JavaScript, it turns out that that single quote breaks some piece of JavaScript. And that kind of might lead you to, into some actual other JavaScript insertions and some other cross-site scripting attack factors. That stuff would not happen if you would just insert your normal image uh, source equals x on error alert. That doesn't happen. Also some really cool guides on some really cool vulnerabilities. I really like XXCs of course and IDORs. I really like that one as well. So if you guys are interested in that I would highly recommend that you go and give it a visit of course. Now um, of course something I really like as well is this bug bounty toolkit. 
he gives you a variety of tools where you guys can learn how to hunt including burp suite of course get js go uh, link finder way back urls way back robots really cool tools all of these but he also explains why you need them and how you can use them because this is really important for me Tools can only get you so far when you're actually bug bounty hunting. If everybody is running the same tools on the same targets, there aren't going to be any vulnerabilities left. And it all comes down to stuff like I told you guys with the cross-site scripting. If your cross-site scripting attack tools only scan for uh, HTML attack factors, that's not going to work on JavaScript attacks, you know? So it's really important to first of all know what the tool you're running is actually doing. Very, very important. Uh, and he actually tells you guys some, some useful stuff as well, like the get.js and that will get any JavaScript file. Why do you need the JavaScript files? Well, he explains it and that's really cool. Finding JavaScript files, hunting in JavaScript files. That's something you guys have asked me as well. Once I have my JavaScript file, what do I do with it? Well, he gives you guys some examples like getting parameters, interesting information, but also sometimes you might come across some obfuscated JavaScript and you might wonder, how do I read this? How do I make it readable again? He gives you a great link to a good deobfuscation tool. So those are the basic reading tools, some really cool tools in here as well. Um, Finding bugs using the Wayback Machine. This is a really good article. If you guys haven't read it, I would highly recommend that you do. Links will be in the description below, of course. Effective note taking for bug bounties is something I really like as well. iBrutsec is the one who made this article for us. And it's a really good article, in my opinion, because notes are very, very important. If you don't take your notes properly, how are you going to know tomorrow what you did today? There, I don't know about you guys, but I do so much things in one session that I, it's impossible for me to keep track of them all. So that's why I spend so much time taking notes, actually. Um, so that's it for the guides. There's also some free web application challenges. I would highly recommend that you guys try these yourself. Soon you will see more web application hacking challenges on my channel. Um, let's see here. He also has a really cool playground. Now, I don't know if this is free. Welcome to my playground, which is a live web application containing recreated real life web vulnerabilities. Practice your hacking on this web application and see if you can use your curious mindset to discover all vulnerabilities. Some might be easy to find, some might require a keen eye. This web application is a demo of what you can expect for a bug bounty hunter, which contains a larger web application. Okay, so this is the free version. And if you actually join the bug bounty hunter um, part of the website, you get, there we go, you will get the full web application. The rules are no automated scanners to be used at all. Where's the fun in letting tools do all the work? That's exactly what I keep telling you guys, automated tools, they're good for something, but they're not super for hacking in my opinion. <laughs> uh, no brute forcing of anything, you do not need to scan the directories or files and hack on this manually and have fun. Subdomains are not in scope and you are only allowed to practice hacking on the scope defined below, which is this specific scope. So we will try our hand at that as well. We will give you guys some, some really cool videos about that soon. Uh, look forward to that. Um, another part of the website, the reading materials we went over. Uh, I don't know if I looked at, yeah, we did look at the useful guides. Um, learning about vulnerability classes is something we looked at as well. Uh, and the disclosed vulnerabilities is something we haven't looked at yet. This is something really cool as well, really cool part of the website. Let's say you're really interested in cross-site scripting and you're wondering, okay, let's see some reports. I wonder what some reports are. This is really cool because he gathers all of the reports, first of all, by the vulnerability and also by um, which application they are reported on. And as you can see, Mail.ru have a lot of cross-site scripting reports and you can directly see how much bounty was being paid. So if you want to see some real life examples of vulnerabilities, this is the place to go, guys. 
he has all of the real cool vulnerabilities on here all of the major ones um, so if you are interested in that if you're interested in bug bounties at all I would highly recommend that you look at this it's really really cool uh, some of my personal favorites um, command injection would be my personal favorite um, logic vulnerabilities you guys asked me a lot about logic vulnerabilities so here you go really cool logic vulnerabilities on here and of course cross-site scripting there's dumb cross-site scripting in here the regular cross-site scripting um, a lot of stuff in here so you have stored you have reflected you have generic cross-site scripting if you guys are interested in that really cool if you guys are interested in bug bounties at all why not come and check out this website it's great i can tell you from personal experience um expect some really cool videos if you've made it this far into the video thank you guys very very much for watching i honestly appreciate everybody of you being here thank you very much for all of my patreons i really appreciate you guys supporting the rat that's amazing that you guys want to support me at all if you guys made it this far i would also really appreciate a like but only if you can spare it and if you like the video of course I hope you have a nice evening, night, morning, whenever you are watching this video. And I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye bye, amazing hacker. See you soon.